We've got a major update on the prospect of a Trump-Harris debate that has dominated the headlines this weekend. While Kamala's been outspoken in her challenge to Trump to honor the debate that he'd already agreed to on September 10th with ABC News, Trump then took to Truth Social with two separate posts, writing, First, I have agreed with Fox News to debate Kamala Harris on Wednesday, September 4th. The debate was previously scheduled against Sleepy Joe Biden on ABC, but has been terminated in that Biden will no longer be a participant, and I am in litigation against ABC Network and George Slopadopoulos, thereby creating a conflict of interest. At a site in an area to be determined, the moderators of the debate will be Brett Baer and Martha McCallum, and the rules will be very similar to the rules of my debate with Sleepy Joe, who has been treated horribly by his party, but with a full arena audience. He then followed that up with a more more recent post saying Kamala Harris doesn't have the mental capacity to do a real debate against me scheduled for September 4th in Pennsylvania. She's afraid to do it because there is no way she can justify her corrupt and open borders, the environmental destruction of our country, the Afghanistan embarrassment, runaway inflation, terrible economy, high interest rates and taxes, and her years long fight to stop the words Merry Christmas. I'll see her on September 4th or I won't see her at all. First off, when Donald Trump says that he, quote, agreed with Fox News to debate Kamala Harris, it is not an agreement if only one party to this agreement knows about it. I can come out here and say I've agreed to play on the Los Angeles Lakers, but if Lakers didn't know about that, then it's not an agreement, it is me wish casting. Even the media, unsurprisingly, was perfectly content to do Donald Trump's bidding here by framing this as some mutual dispute. The New York Times wrote, Trump agrees to a Fox News debate with Harris on September 4th. According to Mr. Trump's post on social media, the debate will take place in Pennsylvania, a crucial battleground state. Again, Trump didn't agree to anything because there was no offer. I can come out and release a statement saying that I've agreed to a $100 million contract courtesy of Mark Cuban, but it's not an agreement if Mark Cuban never offered me a dime. Why the media insists on debasing itself by taking Donald Trump's word for everything is beyond me, but it is the exact reason why fewer and fewer Americans trust legacy media and why more and more trust independent media. Second, he says that he's in litigation with ABC and therefore that creates a conflict of interest. Weird how when Biden was the nominee, there was no conflict. It's only when Kamala became the nominee that suddenly this litigation becomes disqualifying. The litigation, by the way, is a lawsuit that Trump brought against ABC and George Stephanopoulos over Stephanopoulos' assertion that a jury concluded Trump had raped E. Jean Carroll. But this lawsuit had already been brought when Trump had planned on debating Joe Biden on ABC. So again, the only difference here is that the opponent isn't Biden, it's Kamala. And while Trump wasn't afraid of Biden, he certainly is afraid of Kamala. Third, Trump claims that the ABC News debate was, quote, terminated in that Biden will no longer be a participant. But Biden's participation was never a condition of the debate. Right here on the screen are the candidate qualifications for the September 10th debate. It discusses polling, that the candidates have to agree on the rules and format, but that's it. It doesn't mention Biden's name, it doesn't mention Trump's name, it doesn't mention Kamala's name, and yet Trump agreed to it then, so nothing has changed on ABC's end, no contract has changed, none of the rules are different, the only difference here is that Donald Trump is scared of Kamala Harris. Period. Fourth, the notion that Kamala Harris would or should do a debate moderated by Fox News, the network that was just forced to pay $787 million on Trump's behalf, is an absolute joke. And for those who say, well, it's just Brett Baer, he's not exactly Sean Hannity, might I direct your attention to this headline? Brett Baer wanted Fox to rescind Arizona call, put it back in Trump's column. But sure, not exactly Sean Hannity. Got it. The fact is that Fox News has proven itself a propaganda arm of the Republican Party. They are there to ensure that Donald Trump and Republicans win. Everybody knows it, they admit it on a nightly basis. Letting Fox News moderate this debate is like letting Barack Obama moderate the debate. And the fact that Donald Trump needs his allies there on stage with him is yet more proof that he can't do it alone and he needs his training wheels if he's gonna face off with Kamala Harris because something, something, strong man. And to build off that, that is also why he needs an audience. Trump knows that if even half the audience is Trump supporters, they'll be loud and obnoxious and egg him on and make him feel supported. He needs that because he can't do it alone. He can't simply go one-on-one -on -one with Kamala, and so he needs his little support system there with him. He needs his fans and his friendly moderators. We're told that this is the toughest dude in America, and yet he can't do anything without his security blankets. Now, Kamala's campaign has responded brilliantly, writing a statement saying, Donald Trump is running scared and trying to back out of the debate that he already agreed to and running straight to Fox News to bail him out. He needs to stop playing games and show up to the debate he already committed to on September 10th. 
president. The vice president will be there one way or the other to take the opportunity to speak to a primetime national audience. We're happy to discuss further debates after the one both campaigns have already agreed to. Mr. Anytime, Anywhere, Anyplace should have no problem with that unless he's too scared to show up on the 10th. And when she says that she'll be there, you can be assured of the fact that she'll be there, whether she has to stand alongside an empty podium or not. And if you think that won't be damaging, might I remind you of the last Republican who refused to show up to a debate against a Democrat, John Ossoff. Republican David Perdue has served in the U.S. Senate since 2015. Before his election, he sat on the board of five major corporations and co-founded Purdue Partners, a global trading company. Senator Perdue declined to participate in this debate and is represented by an empty podium. And it's probably worth noting that Purdue would go on to lose that election and John Ossoff is now a U.S. Senator from Georgia. So if Trump wants to hand Kamala the gift of an empty podium, that's a historical precedent that we'd be happy to oblige. So look, what's clear is that Trump is doing everything he can to avoid getting on the debate stage with Kamala Harris. He'll keep moving the goalposts from initially accepting a September 14th debate on ABC to then saying that Fox should host a debate to then saying that there will be a Fox debate to then saying that he won't do an ABC debate and the only debate he'll accept is with his lackey moderators and an audience full of Trump fans on a network that paid nearly a billion dollars because it got sued for lying on his behalf. The Overton window will never stop shifting because at the end of the day, Donald Trump wants to make it impossible for Kamala Harris to say yes because his ultimate goal is to avoid her at all costs. This is what it looks like when someone is scared shitless. He is doing everything he can to make it look like she's scared by imposing new qualifications in every subsequent post. But the truth here is obvious. He needs to make it impossible for her to show up because he knows there's no way he can win. And really, at the end of the day, this is all kind of sad. All Donald Trump had left was his strongman persona, his strongman vibes. He has no legislative chops, no foreign policy expertise, he's a terrible speaker, and he's clearly in the throes of cognitive decline. The guy wants to focus only on water pressure and cannibals and windmills. The last inkling of virtue that he had left was his strongman bona fides, and in the course of one week, all of that vanished. Now he's left frantically posting on a social media platform that no one is on and pretending that he's in a position to dictate anything here. Let's be clear, Trump here is the loser. He is out of the White House. The American people rejected him. Kamala Harris was elected vice president of the United States against Donald Trump. Her ticket won. She defeated Donald Trump already. So Trump is not in a position of power. He is a private citizen and she is second in line to the presidency. And he is falling behind her in all of the polls right now, meaning not only does he have no power, but he also has no leverage. And he knows that, and we know that. So he can play make-believe all he wants, but his weak Weakness and fear are already beyond apparent to the entire country. My only hope is that Trump can maybe man up to salvage at least some shred of dignity by showing up to the scheduled debate before losing to Kamala Harris in November. I've got a really exciting announcement. I've written a book. It's called Shameless. This book explores how Republicans have exploited their historical branding while attacking our democracy, how the media has proven itself a willful participant, and how Democrats can learn from this to rebalance the political scales and save our democracy. It has been a lifelong dream of mine to write my own book, and so I'd like to ask you to pre-order it by clicking the link right here on the screen. And if you buy within this pre-order period, your book is going to come with a signed nameplate. As you know, I've never had a single sponsor on my channel. I don't ask for money or anything like that. But if you're looking for a way to support me, this is hands down the best way to do it. So again, follow the link right here on the screen and thank you from the bottom of my heart for pre-ordering Shameless. And as always, make sure to subscribe to see more of my content.